All right, we're live. Everybody, welcome back to the Drew and John show. Uh, we took a little hiatus through the holidays. Actually, it was when uh, John got the coof. Yep. One of your hosts, uh, the managing member of Capital City Gardens, LLC, DBA, Cap City Greens, with uh, the host, your fearless uh, host here, John Dowie at Dowie Micro Farm. Yeah, man. How you doing? Good. Good. Awesome. Really good. Uh, lots, uh, lots to update. I moved back into the farm, so that's why the studio looks different. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my one headphone isn't working. I think it's because this free uh, free soundboard that I got, or free whatever it's called. Not a soundboard, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, mix, mix board. I'm going to just give up on it because I keep getting it wrong. Uh, it, it doesn't always work great, so something's up, and I can't hear out of the right right headphone but it will it will work itself out and uh so yeah but i'm doing well businesses is, is coming back i started picking up a lot more customers again i got a license again um i got a new vehicle and yeah i mean things are things are really good just been working a whole bunch yeah same here things were weird i've got the <clears throat> i got the uh the thing as we uh, as you mentioned back in uh, i got it for christmas Nice. And it was kind of a weird experience. Kind of knocked me down a little bit for a while. It took Sounds a while. Like a really nice Christmas present. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a great. It was a really good Christmas present to my son for his first birthday <laughs> or first yeah. Christmas. It was great. Yeah. So uh, I was kind of knocked out for a while there, and uh, it kind of knocked me down after the fact. The recovery after the fact was weeks, you know, really to get back to full speed. And uh, I still have my little coughing fits now, still. So which sucks, but. Uh, I'm all right though. I'm 98% for, you know, of what a hundred percent of me would be. <laughs> you know, I got sick back in December too. And I, I don't think like my sinuses have stopped draining the whole time since like, it's something kind of weird about it. Um, sorry. So it was bothering me. Like I look crooked here. You know, I think it might've been oh. my camera. Yeah, you're fine. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I've had a lot of sinus drainage. I think a lot of it's just because it's like we're in the period of the winter time in Ohio. We're like today it was like 60 a couple of days. It'll be 30 again. And it just is like the back and forth. It gets really humid then it's not humid because it will rain a whole bunch. So looking forward to not having that or waking up and like with coughing fits. But I don't I still, to my knowledge, have not have the the coof. Um, Good. I've never tested, so, but I mean, I've gotten sick with something that I typically get sick with, so I don't know why I'd test myself unless, you know, there's no, there's no benefit to me testing, so I just don't. Yeah. Well, my first test was negative. Hmm. Why and did you I, test? Just to see? Yeah. I, <clears throat> you know, I'm out delivering and stuff and I'm around people. So, and, uh, you know, we didn't know a lot yet. We knew some about Omicron, I guess, but, uh, you know, the reports where it was mild and whatever, but you know, I still don't want to just go flying all over the town and giving it to everybody. So I, uh, wasn't feeling, I didn't, it was hard to explain. Cause I'm also in the Northeast where it's cold, you know, yeah. and you get sniffles and whatever you always have it if you're working outside in the winter. So I just woke up, uh, and, and my other problem is, is we, I probably mentioned I'm a type one diabetic and I just have bouts of fatigue and problems to just crop up no matter what. So on the Friday that I was doing deliveries, I just didn't feel great. And, but it was real, real mild. And I was like, ah, it's probably just, you know, my diabetes, like, you know, whatever. Um, so Saturday I tested cause I went Friday night on the way home. I stopped and got the dual test or whatever, yeah. and like a CVS. Um, and I tested and it was negative and I went, all right, cool. And I still felt, I felt a little worse later. And I took the other test and it was positive. I was like, come on. <laughs> so, so like, did you take more tests just to make sure I went to urgent care and told them, did, um, did they give you the brain scratcher? Well, no, this is a, this is like, I don't even know how deep I want to get into this on this show, but like I went to urgent care and I thought I'll call them from the parking lot. Cause I tested positive. And I called them from the parking lot and said, Hey, I tested positive. I just want to take like an official test or something. 
And they said, oh, well, if you took a home test and it said positive, then that's that's legit. And I was like, okay, well, I'm a type one diabetic, so I'm eligible for monoclonal antibodies. So I want to get it. I want to know what I need to do. And they go, oh, well, just come in. And I'm like, wait, just come in the building. Like, is there a special door? And they're like, no, just come in. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so I go in and I'm in line and there's like people in there that clearly aren't there for that. They're in there because they have like a sprained ankle or something. They're just sitting in the waiting room. And then there's all these people in this line that are like, I tested positive yesterday. And I'm like, this is the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. I thought this was supposed to be like the this huge problem, you know? So I was a little annoyed with that, how little they were taking that seriously, you know? Um, and, you know, we had the masks on and stuff, but emerging that helps. Science, you know? Emerging science will tell you that's all BS. So, like, I mean, it's we've known that the whole time. Yeah, right? and I knew that. And I just like, wow, this is ridiculous. And um, we're going to this is our first live show. We're going to get canceled. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, anyway, I got up to the counter and the girl just gives me a phone number to call to get the antibody treatment and Did i'm you like the antibody treatment i'm like you could have just given me that over the phone when i was on the phone with you yeah so then i i tried to get it through them and i couldn't get an appointment i couldn't even get someone to answer so then i called my doctor um on monday and he oh wait it was, i don't remember the timeline to be honest with you but whatever so like You're but I had, I had delivered one day because my test was negative and then i just you know, deliver, or then I tested positive again, or like a couple days later. So, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't think I gave it to anybody because I was a little freaked out about not feeling good, you know, whatever, even if I had tested positive and I blew in and out of places, didn't talk to anybody and I didn't hear any subsequent, you know, we had an outbreak kind of thing. So that's good. But, um, my doctor set me up with the antibody thing. I didn't actually do it though. The lady talked me out of it. The lady was there. She goes, the side effects from it are worse than what you see people that have bad side effects from the vaccine. And I was feeling okay at the time I was in day five and I had no real symptoms. I still was, I mean, I was like a little sluggish and that was it. You know, um, I was still just working on the farm alone, regular. And, um, so she talked me out of it and I didn't do it. And then on day six, it kicked my ass. I was just out spread. It was wicked cold and icy. I was spreading wood ash on the ice out back so we don't die just feeding the ducks and um i just like all of a sudden i was like man i i just it just all hit me and um it was all stomach for me it was hmm. all i had no no respiratory symptoms until way later when i ended up with pneumonia so you ended up getting pneumonia too yeah yeah i got like mild pneumonia a few days uh probably so on christmas day i was like i should go to the hospital because i'm i messed up and uh but we had an ice storm, so I didn't want my wife to have to drive me with the baby to the hospital, you know. So we waited till the next day. I went in. Really, all I needed was an IV bag, and I was fine after that. So, hmm. but I had a touch of pneumonia. They gave me steroids, which destroys blood sugar. Um, so I struggled with like ridiculously high blood sugars for like four or five days straight, and uh, that sucked on its own. So, but they do the uh, steroids to counteract the cytokine storm you can get from the autoimmune reaction or the immune reaction. So, uh, so I needed to take them. So I took them all, but the last day, cause I just got tired of my blood sugar being uncontrollable. <laughs> so uh, like I would eat a salad and my blood sugar would go to like two eighty. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so, that's pretty wild. so anyway, that's what happened. Um, anyway, enough of that. That's why I was out down and out for a while. And, uh, it seems like you were sorting out a lot of things. So that's, yeah. Cool. I was moving, so I think, uh, you know, I still had Tim employed, and we were kind of on our last stitch effort to give him another opportunity. And then he just messed up again. And it was, and I was just like, this isn't going to improve. You have to be an adult and make the tough decision. So then I, uh, it was like before Thanksgiving, I was like, yeah, I got to, I got to move back in, man. Like, I can't. Uh, I can't afford this anymore. And I'm still kind of recovering because then like once I, it was like, once I moved, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get all moved back in December, early December. So I, I did my jail time uh, December 3rd. Cause I looked and I was like, Oh man, like I have to do this now. And that was an interesting experience, man. That was actually pretty nice. I wasn't in real jail. I was in like, it was kind of like a college. I mean, it was real jail. I mean, 
if I would have messed up, they would have sent me to to real jail. Um, yep. So that so I did my my time. I went and got my license. Um, I paid to get my car fixed, and my car broke again on Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Uh, and then my mechanics were out of town, and then the tow truck driver put it in the wrong place that I told him to. So then it got snowed on, and then they had to push it in because the starter was bad. So they're like, you can't work on your car till the snow melts. I'm like, I understand. Um, so they're working on it now, but I've since gotten like a Ford Escape since I can't find Focus Wagons anymore. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, and yeah, so then, you know, I ended up was going to have Tim just work with me still. And but I was just going to pay him a wage and he owed me money for fixing the car. So I was like, look, you can just work it off. So I'll allow you to work it off. I'm going to give you a raise from what I used to pay you before. Like we went here, you know, you're more skilled. You've done a lot more things on the farm. So you deserve a raise. He just had a bad attitude, man. And then one time, one day he came to help me and I, I told him I was, I was like, get the F out. I don't need this crappy attitude. I did all the work myself. And then, um, so it took me about like, cause I ended up getting sick. And so he actually did manage some things for me. So he was like, he was with Thanksgiving. He, he was like, he was really trying to earn his keep and show he was worth his, his salt. And then like, I had like two days with a few days before Christmas, uh, I like was up late. It was like time to harvest. It was one of those things that like everything looked ready and it's, you know, it's eight o'clock. I'm like, so I'm just going to get this knocked out now. So I get to harvesting and I had messaged Tim and I was like, Hey, do you want to come and help me harvest? He goes, go into the bar. I'll help in the morning. And I was like, all right. So this is after I like kicked him out. And I was like, this ain't this. We're going to have a conversation about how we're not, you're just, you can just pay me back. Uh, cause I don't want you working with me anymore. And then it's like 3 AM. Like, cause I couldn't really sleep. So like I ate, uh, I ate like a, I went to the, I went to the, I had my license back. So I went to the park cause the liquor stores were closed. I just had like a couple drinks just to like, cause I was just kind of amped up from harvesting and moving around shit. You know what I mean? And then, uh, I also ate like a little piece of like a, a special cookie. And then, uh, so it's like starting to kick in. I'm, I'm back from the bar. It's starting to kick in. It's like 3 a.m. And I hear this loud knock on the door. And I'm like, did Tim show up here? Because he got mad at me because, like, I figured out that I'd had a lot of issues with crops. But as you know, like, I'd never really watered. Like, Rich was always watering or I had him doing certain things. And I was always focusing on sales. And then it just was just came to the reality that like dude you can't you have to be the guy like you can't you've put yourself in so many binds because you you were ha like your business model hasn't been scalable like my business model hadn't been scalable so now it's like okay now i just got to pay people a wage and we can make it scalable like brock can take deliveries without me like he doesn't need me around he gets checks like it's great um so I noticed that, you know, stuff was growing so much better, like better than I ever had. And I was like, huh, these people that have been working for me definitely would let the stuff fall over and miss a watering because when you water like afterwards to try to bring it back, it you'll get like dead spots. You'll get a lot of different stuff. And um, so I'd called Tim like because he called me and he was just. I was like, hey, man, I harvested. I got most of the stuff done. I can still use you in the morning to come and clean the trays up. What time do you think you'd be there? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm probably not going to be able to make it in the morning. And I go, oh, okay. Well, listen, man, uh, I've, since I've been taking over watering, uh, I just want you to know that plants grow a lot better when you water them consistently and you don't let them fall over. <laughs> And he like took that. He, he told our mutual friend. He thought I was talking to him like he was a dog or something for saying that. I'm like, not really. I was just telling you like, hey, I know how much you were actually lying to me. And now hindsight, how much Rich was probably lying to me too. <clears throat> um, 
And so it's like 3 a.m. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, you know, he must be here drunk or something. Yeah. And he's all butthurt with me. So this is going to be fun. And then I look out like I don't have a eye hole, but I'm tall like you. And there's like a glass kind of window thing on my front door. Yep. I peek out and I see disco lights going on outside, like cop <laughs> lights. I'm like, are the cops at my door right now? And so I open the door and sure enough, there's like four cops. There's six cops in the front yard. There's more out kind of in the street area. And Jeez. there's another cop in my driveway, like scoping out. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, cause I was staying in here at the time cause I hadn't fully moved in yet. And I don't have curtains up here um in the room so but i have a motion sensor in like the back and it's mm -hmm. usually just a cat or something that's that stuff and then gone all the way to the backyard and so he was like uh is tim o'neill here and i was like uh no he's not here i got rid of him a month ago i kicked him out a month ago they go oh he's having we we just had some reports and then like man like the I was like, what? So apparently he was just saying crazy stuff to his baby mama or something. And she was concerned and mm. put out a wellness check for him. So I had eight cops coming to my house looking for him. Oh, my God. And I was like, so I, I said some not so nice things to him at three in the morning, just like anybody would. And I probably could have been nicer, but uh, I'd been nice enough. And then he just wanted to argue with me about like how could i be so upset and like so i was like you need to turn your keys in like this is this is over man like yeah i can't, I can't have somebody that's here that's going to be having cops come to my house randomly yeah. because you say stupid things to your kid's mom so i'm happy to say since like no no tim no rich my business my life it's so much less drama free <clears throat> yeah and uh so i i just actually hired the girlfriend to help me with with stuff and i don't have to tell her over and over again what to do she yeah so, so now you have like a similar you have like a similar situation as me because i'm running this yeah. with my wife right it's just it's yeah. easier with, with the two people that you know actually give a shit you know what yeah I mean? and like and she really i mean and i do most of skilled labor like she actually can plant like she's pretty good at but i'm faster so yeah we'll do that and so we planted um I mean, we'll do so if I prep out all the seed and all the trays, we can do like, you know, 70 trays in less than two hours, the two of wow. us together. I take uh, six hours to do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because I stop and look at my phone every, every, <laughs> I'll fill eight trays with soil that I'm like, oh, let me change the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll just have that running, but like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go down and probably plant some more mustard. I'm going to, yeah, swallow out the trays, plant. If I can get everything else planted tonight, I probably will. I might good. just plant the most. Yeah, you were planting there. before today, right? So, yeah, yeah. So we good. did we did the pea and radish, and then Lily, she needed something to eat. So, yeah. um, Lynn's daughter, so she's. It was like, hey, it's dinner time. I'm like, yeah, well, get out of here. Like, it's it's fine. Like, we got you already helped me out a ton. I got like the quickest growing crops, so I gotta get the other stuff done. Yeah. That's a, um, and that's that's a weird thing because that's the most important thing when you're planting, right? Is like you have two kinds of crops. You ha well, kind of three. You have the crop yeah. that like is okay. This is radish and like a salad type blend thing, and this is you know like purple cabbage and and like uh, kohlrabi, broccoli, things like that, mustards, arugula. Those have to get done on a day, right? Like okay, I need these for this certain day. I need these for next or the Thursday after next. So I got to plant these on a specific day. Right. Yeah. Whereas like, then you have like, I do chervil and that's like a 15 to 17 day grow. And so is my cilantro. So that's a different timing, obviously. Yeah. Then you have things like basil, red sorrel that will sit on the shelf, right. For days and days before you have to cut it. Okay. So that can get planted whenever. <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah. like it's it kind of works that's how i work things at least so yeah, it's it's a little different so like i have kind of like because radish and pea shoots are going to be six to seven day crops so it's like okay i need these for next week yeah. already fucked up and didn't plant mustard last week I, lynn was sick so i was doing everything and then i had to do deliveries i've, I've just been really hustling like with the sales aspects of so doing everything is a lot of work thankfully i had brock to do some deliveries but it's 
really having a helper like i could do everything but it's i don't want all my time and then i've been my buddy uh started his pizza his wood-fired pizza trailer he actually oh, yeah the new haven connecticut got a trailer with a three thousand pound oven on it or something it's it's nice i mean it's yeah so i've been helping him and then i've just been trying to get like all these side hustle gigs because my cash was low yeah so, and i tell you what it's really nice getting paid cash working for your friend's business to where it's not all on fucking you and you can just kind of like yeah i'll help you with this it's like oh this is nice yeah it so is I've, nice for a while yeah 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 like i've been doing it for i don't do every shift he'll ask me if i can help him if i can i, I won't like we just went to detroit for an art show or you know what i mean like if i'm i want to do something nice with a girlfriend and he's he's getting um we're getting like he's he's got people that are rotating in it's him and his wife too so it's it's nice to being around people that are like brand new in business again because it's like that energy yeah and then also like the anxiety that you see them dealing with and you're like oh i remember that that sucks like your very first farmer's market <clears throat> something yeah. like that you know what i mean like uh it's, it's so, always good to be with around somebody that's on their way up yeah yeah like, yeah and it's it's really been uh beneficial for me i think because it was for a, for a while there i just wasn't doing enough like i just wasn't doing enough like last year i made that deal with tim and it didn't work out to my favor i gave him every opportunity in the world and it put me in a deep hole because i didn't i didn't know that i needed to pull the plug six months before i did yeah it's it's always it's tough though yeah so uh well that's good so we have some topics i yeah line it what was the there was something you wanted to say too and i we didn't communicate it <laughs> and then you, the, you said it in the pre-show and i was like oh yeah, yeah we can cover that and i don't remember my what it was. soil yes yeah, oh yeah let's talk yeah, about yeah, soil. yeah so i mean it goes into costs so, so this kind of goes into our supply chain issues though that we wanted to talk about yeah right? it, yeah, and a big event happened. So um, we use different containers. I used to do reusable containers like you, but because yep. my one of my biggest customers, a distributor, they I I can't expect a distributor to buy stuff from me, collect my containers, and return them to me from the restaurants. Like I just yeah, no, oh, yeah, you're using a, yeah, you're using a distributor. Yeah, you can't. No, you got to use clamshells with a the distributor. There's no yes, way. so I switched to clamshells, and I actually getting clamshells consistently has been a bit of a nightmare. So anything plastic, as we've already discussed with uh, just our inability to get trays. Um, oh, nice. Look, Look at that. that. Look, Look at that. Look at that. So uh, I can uh, get trays now, by the way. So, okay. That's great. They're I got different. That. Did we talk about that? No. Okay, we can talk about that at the we end. We need to talk about that. That's going to be part so, of. So, so your thing was your soil cost went up quite a bit. Now, my I, soil I know cost went up. I like my soil guy, but it was like I. It's been going up every year, and then it's like he couldn't get to me until March. It sucks because I really like this dude, and I own yeah. some money. Is this a hydroponic uh, store or something? You said like a no. So my soil guy, it's uh, Ohio Earth Food. He's got his own business. He's in like whiskey. Oh, he makes it. Yeah, he has oh. uh, Amish guys make it. Um, I think or Mennonite guys, something like that. Okay. And uh, Ted, Ted's a great guy. Um, uh, it's just we gotta we're in business and we gotta cut costs. And it's yeah. it's and and then what sucks is I I could have handled the price increase and I would have gladly done it until this other huge thing happened, which was. We both use, I use both True Leaf and Kitswana. I get better deals on certain things through True Leaf. Yeah. And a lot of better deals on like most of my brassicas, like my my Asian seed varieties that I love. Yeah. Um and so I got this I got this random message from you on Signal that's uh and I placed an order with Kitswana and it was like, you know, it's been like three weeks and I haven't gotten a pound of crimson tide mustard. Yeah, a pound of astro arugula, and then I I email Maya, and I'm like, hey, I placed this order. What's going on with it? And they said, oh, sorry, we actually were out of stock. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, we, we just merged with True Leaf. 
And yeah, this is the worst thing that's happened to my business, I think, other than being shut down, you know, in 2020. The pandemic, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I know I said before the show, I was going to stop saying like, but I'm so frustrated. <laughs> mm -hmm. This this messes up my whole system because I went through and looked. I, I have about 25 different kinds of seeds on hand, and um, I would say – I was getting about 60 to 70% of them from Kitazawa. So like, I don't, I don't know what to do with it because I was getting all my cilantro from them. That's my main crop. Um, yeah. I was getting bulk red cabbage from them, which is the main ingredient in my just base blend, you know, salad blend. I was getting uh, bulk basil from them and I don't, it does all my radish except for maybe Sango. I was getting that from mountain Valley or truly for whatever we're calling it. Um, I, I still see the purple. Their purple radish works great for me. Yeah, I, didn't, I grew it. I didn't like it. <laughs> it's a bigger seed because I, I cut it. Wasn't it wasn't as dark purple as the Sango. For I me, I, I didn't. It Maybe I'll try it again. Good. Well, I, I, ordered, wasn't, I wasn't using Sango either. I was using Rambo. Yeah, they're the same pretty much. Yeah. But I ordered. Um, but the purple so, seed, I just got 25 pounds for like 200 something bucks. So okay. that's actually a better deal. The free shipping's a good deal. What I don't like is. Every single mustard, it used yep. to you used to be able to pay like sixteen bucks a pound. Now they're all like forty bucks a pound. Yeah, except for like the mustard that I would get from True Leaf, which was like the best deal. So now it's like okay, so now my purple mustards I got to pay forty bucks a pound for, um, and I can still get my one mustard I get from True Leaf, but now it's like okay, so now I have to find another green mustard because I was using Green Wave. Uh, but mainly it was because it was inexpensive and it had good flavor. Like they had some gems on there that you could tell nobody really went after, like uh, Crimson Tide. Yeah, that's the one I use. Yeah. So like Crimson Tide was my go-to because I originally was using um, with something frills or something. It was like 80 bucks a pound. Yeah, red uh, frills or whatever. Scarlet frills, yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, crimson. Yeah, Tide. I I was getting something from from Kitazawa that was like just a red Mizuna style mustard that was like maybe thirteen dollars a pound or something, and it was inexpensive. And and I was like, this is perfect. And now and it's then, like forty bucks a pound. Yeah, now that's over now that's over. And they re, and they rebranded it as so every good seed that they had they've rebranded to True Leaf. Yep. And it's just like the same stuff they did with the pea tendril. Like, look up pea tendril on there. We I, used to get the yellow organic, and we also get used to get the green organic, just field pea. Yeah. And they both would give you tendril. The yellow would work better during the summertime. The green would work better during the wintertime. And then they both turned into field pea magically. And then they had uh, a pea tendril seed that was quadruple the price that they came so, out with. What are you looking at now? Sorry, look what? up pea tendril. I mean, look up the yeah. price for that versus yellow organic, which was one of the least expensive. I mean, I I do like yeah. that they they brought out some non organic seeds that you can yeah. get for pea. I like I like. So they call it aphilia tendril. This was a, so. This is what That's drives me. New. This is annoying. So while well, aphilia was a Hitazawa seed, yeah, it I, sucked. I bought it. It was awful. I, yeah, I tested it too. I I I strictly use mums for my for my pea tendrils. Um, I just tell people you can't get them anymore because I'm not like yeah. the seed is too expensive. Well, I get a pretty good price. I want to say from mums and. uh I can't remember though, like exactly what I paid, <laughs> you know, but, um, I, I got a thousand, almost a thousand pounds in and, um, that's a year. And that's what I'm doing about supply chain. I'm just ordering everything I can in, in one year amounts, you know, um, that's what Swain's doing too. I, I just don't have the, I just don't have the, I just haven't had the money. Yeah. It's I tough. Have, I just had I'm I, credit had carding I, it. I'm credit had carding I it. I made yeah. the, the correct big boy pants executive move and said, in August, as soon as this lease is up, I got to move back in the farm because supply chain issues. Uh, Tim's not a horse I can bet on. Uh, and that that was it. I got to look out for me. But it was like I didn't want to kick out him and his family. Yeah, and, then, and then once once it was apparent that, oh, this is not a family, and then the, the, 
the baby and mom left it was like dude you gotta go yeah because well, he yeah, got so, even worse and it was just so, i don't want to i don't want to beat a dead horse here but it was just like yeah i think anyway, yeah been, i mean with supply i've been having issues with almost everything though like it's been random seeds rotating through that you've either not been able to get or the price has gone crazy um you know or it's been soil um i haven't had a soil problem yet but it's only because it was the last thing I needed in a string of things that I got screwed on. Right. Mm. So when I really started having issues with stuff like perlite was the big one for me because I use a lot of perlite. Yeah, um, I, I still think it's weird that you use so much perlite. Uh, it, it works wonders for my soil though. Well, it's because I do the, the, the auto watering thing and the yeah. flood table, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. I might, I might have to change once I switch over to uh, an yeah. automated watering system. Yeah. So, so, Perlite was a big eye opener for me, basically, with like the company I get Perlite from just couldn't didn't have any at all. So I had to find it and I found it and I don't even like the product that I'm getting and it's much more expensive. But I got four pallets of uh, three cubic foot bags. So like it's it's like two years worth of Perlite. So I'm good with Perlite. Then I took um, four pallets. Maybe it was three pallets. I can't remember. I took enough pallets of soil to where I don't even remember how many I got. <laughs> I remember I saw the photo. I wish I wish you had a photo to. You yeah, I did. People. I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, so I took a lot of soil and like I got it. I get it for ten dollars a bag when I do it that way. So or two cubic feet for ten bucks. That's a good deal. And um, Here so I did. I got, I, I'm sending it to your email now. Yeah. Oh, the picture. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a uh, a bunch of that going or a bunch of soil in and um let me I'll open up my email while you're doing that i got a bunch of perlite in i ordered a year's worth of pea tendril seeds and then when there was a trucker strike in canada <laughs> and i realized i get my sunflower from canada and i'm down to about uh hmm, you don't like uh true leaf sunflower i don't i, I just i really like the uh the sunflower from uh oh that's my perlite pitcher <laughs> it's still yeah. it's still impressive it's a lot of perlite let me it's... see if i can make it bigger so it's better to look at um yeah i uh there we go bam there's my there's me getting perlite and that's only half of the perlite so as you can see here that's my little landscape trailer that's like uh i don't know six by ten i want to say and that's full and these are three cubic foot bags, so they're pretty big. Or I'm sorry, six cubic foot bags. They're big. Um, and then the back of the truck. There's one in the cab. It's a pain in the butt. It's just my crappy Dakota, my 2005 Dodge Dakota. I got I got you with uh, COVID. Oh. <laughs> in the grow room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's, and here's the photos of me when I was moving in in December. This was – I'm just now feeling like <laughs> – I'm yeah, that's me with the that's me on day one of testing positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, I got it. <laughs> I'll show I'll show my house the the way it looked. Dude, thank God for my shout out to my girlfriend again. She helped me move and clean everything. She's she's uh hopefully she'll marry me someday. I gotta, I gotta make sure she's gonna say yes. Oh you know? my god, that's a mess here. Oh, what did I do? Share. share it doesn't look like that now but that was like oh i, I, I hope not i had to get everything in <laughs> and i just moved in and uh i sold those lamps actually no i gave the lamps to uh, the girlfriend i hadn't mounted the tv i had to do so much stuff to get like to be able to move back in oh what a mess i do not for the people on the podcast we're looking at photos <laughs> <laughs> so watch the video version i guess yeah yeah, yeah. so uh anyway the, the issue here that is i'm actually really annoyed with this situation with the kitazawa uh true leaf thing because that cilantro thing i just looked today it's, it, it was doubled it's more than double for 25 pounds is what we would have paid uh, sure it's free shipping but it's, it's yeah you know what i was paying for bulk cilantro shipping through kitazawa and I, it was pretty much um like a guarantee that it would cost this much money. If I was getting 50 pounds of seeds, bucks. If, no, if I was getting 50 pounds of seeds, it was going to be $50 ship. It was a dollar pound. So I don't even, I don't care about their free shipping. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. it was just dumb to me. Um, I'm really bummed out about it though, because now it's the, the seed industry is becoming way too homogenized. 
so now like true leaf is really for a microgreens grower is the number one source of microgreen seeds Which right? doesn't, it, and it also doesn't help with all these people like look i'm not afraid of competition that's not that is not like you can go to compete with me i'll i'll, I'll put you under you can't i'll cut yeah. prices down to fucking zero if i have to <laughs> and i can survive longer than you can i promise yeah. not you but my i know what you mean customer. yeah but the um everybody's selling courses i mean i found that that new girl who my one buddy sent and she she's like oh i love doing this become a microgreens grower Ugh. and it's just i'm just sick of it man quit selling courses because it's, yeah. it's all it does is flood the market with people that waste their money that get started and never do anything yeah and it's just that, so they're going to drive up the cost of our seed everything and then they're probably just going to throw that fucking seed away yep and it's, yeah. it's it's so infuriating it's what so you can sell a few courses and you can make some money selling courses cuz you're trying to have an exit strategy for when you're for actually farming yeah yeah right and I, it's it's just irritating yeah it's the worst what well, yeah, we yeah, really so it. okay so honestly so it was a little more it was 70 about 80 bucks to ship 50 pounds yeah it was 80 bucks which okay. was always annoying cuz they would this, so you. that went up that went up though because if i went back and that's 21 that's october 21 so uh at the end actually it's almost november last year so it's just this last november basically and we know shipping was nuts um before that i was at about 50 to 60 bucks so it went up a little but i'm okay paying 222 for 50 pounds of cilantro from them right because what's what, that truly right now i'm gonna look it up right now Oops. um there it is. Yeah, so through to, there it is. The 25 pounds. Splits, so 25 pounds, 184. Yeah. So we're so this is what it. we're dealing with. So I was at 222 for 50 pounds, right? So, yeah, so now we're at 280. So yeah. I was at 23 cents a pound. Is that right? No, that's not right. <laughs> Four bucks a pound. Sorry. Yeah. I did it backwards. 444 a pound. And now that's I'm at still- it's still not. I mean, it's not double. It's not as much as I thought it was because I forgot it's about. Still the cost a bunch. Of I mean, that's ridiculous. Much. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Now we're getting. It almost doubled. It went from four forty four to seven thirty six a pound. That's huge. But I, but I mean, so shipping's included in this, though. Who so. cares? No, that was shipping included too with Kitazawa. That yeah, total was, price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, was paying. I paid two hundred and twenty two dollars for fifty pounds. Okay, yeah, now that's one. And they want times two 184 for 25 oh, yeah, shit 184 it's almost double it's like 80 yeah, it pretty much double yeah 380 more expensive through this company <sighs> and it, the problem is it's homogenized and they know they can do it and that's my assumption on this because johnny's is expensive okay high mowing is expensive super high quality but but both high mowing and johnny's super high quality seed companies everything you get is going to grow wonderfully a lot of organic stuff. That's great. Really good selection. Blah, 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 blah. Wicked expensive. <laughs> right? If you want that, that's fine. You can pay that money. But it's not necessary to sell to chefs. Chefs, My chefs don't give one shit if my cilantro seeds are organic, certified they or not. Want, they just want good flavor. They, yep. They want good so, flavor and good look. Yeah. So, like, I'm not interested. I don't buy much from Johnny's because I don't need that. You know? I buy some stuff from Johnny's. And I think they're a great company. But... I don't really need it. I don't need what they offer, for, especially for the price. I mean, it really would cut in on my my profits. And I'm really trying my best right now not to raise prices, even though everything else in the world is going up. So we get this buyout from True Leaf, okay? And they basically raise prices by 80%. That's bullshit. I mean, I can see yeah. 10, 15% because we know inflation is really, you know, 15 to 30%, you know? But like, I don't know. I just think it's garbage. I'm really, I'm kind of pissed off about it and I might not ever buy from them again at this point. I might try to figure out how to circumvent true leaf. I'm using mums as much as possible because I, that was after Kitazawa mums was my favorite company after yeah. that. It went Kitazawa then mums. And, and then I would deal with true leaf to get everything else and fill in the blanks. Yeah, but the, the stuff going on in um, Canada now, it's like, what do we? Yeah. Well, and that's what I was worried about, but the only, that seems like it's winding down. I yeah. think 
but yeah, so. they might just go home though and not work at the same the same thing you know I'm not, like, I, I I just need I, it's it's interesting I thought this stuff was going to start going on last year yeah and so I'm about a year off um well it's because Trudeau pushed him over the edge with his his stupid mandate and that's well that's I just set it off you know you no know, he doesn't know what's really going on like that he, guy's an idiot I mean just like our our uh our fearless uh yeah our potato salad in chief <laughs> potato salad in chief yeah yeah there's not <laughs> a, but that's what sucks there really isn't any other big bulk seed people i mean it's yeah. it's um well i'm working on something that's all i can say right now okay well let uh, me know you're always pieces. you're always crafty man and oh that I'm, was one thing it out. that was one thing too was when we were um when we were uh the mic keeps moving around on you huh no, I I'm trying to get this 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 ear to be able to hear again. But, oh, okay. um, no. So when when I was looking at plastic, so actually um, I started an Amazon business account, and I need to actually look at it because it reduced the cost of a ton of stuff. Yep. And I do that. Yeah. It's like I really don't want to give Jeff Bezos my money, but at the same time, it's like if Webster on store, it was. Every couple of weeks, I need to order more of these they're, clamshells. They're too expensive, too. And they just kept, it, I mean, it more than almost it went up just like True Leaf did. And then you gave me that other company. What was the name of that company? I want to share it with people. I want to well, share it with all three of our they, viewers. They didn't even, they didn't even help, man. Like they were like, oh, they didn't have it. So they didn't have it. They said, would you like, uh, us to get, would, you, would you like to get something else? And I was like, uh, yeah, if I can. And then they never, they never sent me another email. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, they were great with me. So it's, I need uh, uh, it's, it's S. Hold on. It's a weird name. Yeah, it's S Y S dot org or something like that. Or on. no, that can't be it. Oh, I'm looking S at the wrong. Okay, one. yeah, it's S P L Y Co. Oh, S P L Y Co. Yeah, S Y Co. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and I I really haven't checked my email, so maybe it did get lost in the email. But I got so I ended up getting so on Amazon I ended up getting like these containers on Webstaurant store that were like two hundred dollars for two hundred up like paying uh, I don't know like one hundred forty bucks for them with yep. prime shipping and then as soon as I bought them that that it, it went to pretty much a way higher price so I, I yeah. dodged the bullet and I just did it again hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, That's see, it. Yeah, yeah. Supply code. Yeah, they never. Huh. I'm looking. They never. They never responded to me again. That's weird. Because I had their email is uh, here. I'm gonna put it up, even though they seem to have not replied to you. But uh, well, I had it first, and they said um, maybe my email didn't go through or something. Oh, but... I screwed this up. Yes, yeah, at sales at splyco dot com is their email. I got to something from them. I, I got clamshells and then they were great. They were here fast. They were, but maybe they got inundated. Who knows? Because I use um a gen pack. Uh, That's what they're out of. They're out of the gen pack. Okay. So they were out of gen pack. And then they said that they were like, we're out of gen pack. Cause gen and they pack, said, would you like something nothing. different? And I was like, yeah. And then and they that's so, that's weird. So yeah, they said to me, we don't have that gen pack, but do you have, do you want, um, uh, what do we got? You know, I've been the wrong Gen email. Pack. Maybe hold on. Maybe they did respond to me. Genpack's having a, this is last year in August. Genpack's having a production issue on the AD containers. There's an industry wide shortage. We have an alternative from DW, which we sell to most bakeries and processors now. See attached. Look at VH32. Um, so if I wonder if I put that into their website, if it'll come up, VH32, VH32. Sorry, this is great pod. So uh, <laughs> uh, there it is. Says it's available. Sixty six. Oh, holy God. You did respond to me. There it is. Did you receive an invoice? Uh, what did I do? I screwed up. So she so she responded and it said, did you receive an invoice? Uh, this no, is the. Uh, so this is their 32 uh, ounce. Holy cow. Oh, that's 32. I need 60. And you need 64. I think they yeah. have, I think they have one. I think, uh, V8, it'd be VH 64 probably. 
I would think. Hopefully it exists. Bam! There you go. 50 out of stock. <laughs> out of stock. <laughs> out of That's stock. only 110. 59.68 for 110. Yeah. Yeah. So for is that a little high? That's two, a little high. No, maybe. no, no. Actually, no. Today it is no? not high. No, no, because for 220, it would only be like 120 bucks. I wonder if they have the gen pack in though. I wonder if they're gen back. pack, I think I think I think they're totally out. And I think that's why they haven't 8064 gen pack, 100 for 57. Um, why is that one so much better? We'll check both of them. Yeah, it's trying to this get the, in, the gen packs in stock. It is now. There you go. Hundred pack for fifty seven dollars, or a two hundred case for eighty seven dollars, which is much better deal. Both of those are interesting, and I actually need these, so I'm going to come back here later in order because we're going to start marketing. So that's uh, that brings us to our next subject. Since we're ragtagging this show, this is a pretty poor quality show so far. <laughs> I don't think so. I think, we're, I think I think we we haven't done it in a while, and we got we both got heated. Yeah, I, so well, I paid one hundred eighteen dollars for two hundred containers, and it's pretty much, and it's the jet, it's the Karat. This is what I just bought on Amazon. Are they any good? Did you get them? I'm not gonna get them till like my birthday. Oh, geez, when's that? March fourth. Eh, it's not too far away. No. Let me know when they come in. I mean, that's not a terrible price because that's because no. this company's gonna charge shipping too. Um, yeah, so that that was with shipping. I don't know what they charge you for shipping. Uh, I have my invoice from Splyco. I paid them via PayPal, which was very, to me, shady. <laughs> Why? Because if they if it's not no, they sent me yeah okay they sent me an invoice via PayPal. Oh, so I can't pull that up here right now. I oh, I don't know. I just have this long, that horrible long string of emails that you can't decipher because everything has the header and the footer. Oh my god. Anyway, so though no, but these containers, uh, the other company that they did send me, they were good. I didn't notice the difference between Genpack and uh, whatever that was, that brand. Anyway, so with Kitazawa's situation, what I'm trying to do is reverse engineer <laughs> where my last shipment came from by looking at the tracking record. Okay. It's Kitazawa was drop shipping with their bulk orders. Okay. And I want to know. So I went and looked at an email I got from them from FedEx or whatever that said your shipment's been, you know, whatever is on its way. And I went to the detailed shipping info and I got it narrowed down to a city. Is and it then in, I Googled is it in the United States. Yes. And it's like, cannot remember the name of the city now i googled um did i save i wonder if i saved bookmarks i, I don't remember no i don't i probably didn't i probably lost all those tabs but anyway so i googled whatever I, it was like it was a place in like arizona or something or new mexico and um okay so i googled seed distributors in that city and like 20 came up which is crazy. So there must be like a, that, that town must be like a major seed hub. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to start cold calling them and just being like, like I, I kind of can, I narrow it down. I can, you can narrow it down a little more by looking what they offer, looking at what they offer. Cause I was getting cilantro. Right. So my first thing is I want to track down where was Kitazawa getting their bulk cilantro ship from. Now I can't just email Maya because I'm sure she's not allowed to tell me. Right. So, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to reverse engineer and figure out where are these companies getting their seeds from. And then I'm going to see if those companies will sell to me or drop ship for me. And that's what I'm going to do. Because okay. why wouldn't they? If they're yeah. drop shipping for Kitazawa, why wouldn't they drop ship for me? Other than maybe because they were taking, you know, because Kitazawa is maybe buying massive amounts of seed from them, right? Well, if that's the case, I'll start my own seed company and I'll just drop ship. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, and I, I won't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the major selling point. I won't be a fucking asshole and make you pay fucking seven dollars and fifty cents a pound for cilantro seeds. That's absurd. Yeah. You know? So I I can't even get my head around that that price you just showed me. So I've been reaching out to moms too to see if they can get things like. So I'm looking for um shiso right now red shiso that was the one i texted you about yeah. i used to get shiso from kitazawa for 88 dollars a pound 
fucking True Leaf wants 130 or something now because they absorbed Kitazawa. And they didn't used to be that high because I used to consider ordering my Shiso from True Leaf because they were close in price with Kitazawa. Yeah, but then they, now that they don't have comp, like, I'm interested. Yeah, they have no like, competition. What other seeds go up for them? Yeah, oh, it's going to be all of it. So, so now I'm like, okay, hey, and I, so I emailed Mums. I haven't gotten a reply. Um, and I'm just like, hey, do you can you carry? Uh, I they have shiso, they'll sell it in small amounts, but I want a pound, you know. So I'm like, can will you sell me? But they're weird because they're Canadian, so they sell it by the kilogram. I don't know what that means. They what is that like two two point one pounds or something? Two so, point two pounds. Uh, how much? Two point two. Ah, and that's why just you, a, why don't you uh, move to Canada, Drew? So <laughs> and that's <laughs> just that's that just shit. Nice no, I, I you just I just learned the metric system. Yeah, it's fine. So um it's from my yeah. base science background. So uh all right, moving on, man. What's your marketing plan? It's gonna be March. We're, we all yeah, have to be ready. So it's gonna be March. Right now, um my marketing plan. So I just I actually found my LED links. Remember, I said I got a few lights, but I thought Richard got them. Turns out I bought them from my Amazon account. I found them. Nice. And they were they'd like actually came down in price quite a bit so i ordered um i heard six more of them so i'm going to start converting the room to led you know what I they're called? they don't they don't run as hot as yours do and huh. maybe because i just have these these strips yeah are so, they in like a tube looking thing yeah okay and That's you can daisy chain them what's your what's it called what, what do you know what their brand is uh hold on i, actually I will look it up actually have that in signal too I use, uh, blah blah. Just say it when you get it, because I'll look it up. But I use um, Barina. That's what I use. C N Sunway Lighting LED. C N Sunway Lighting. C N Sunway. Shop lights it says, but that's all right. Yeah. We'll find C N Sunway Lighting LED shop light. Yeah. I think I found it. I'm not trying to have like these big expensive pocker lights. So there's just, even yeah. though, even though it's what, what I really love, John, is when I talk to somebody that grows pot. Yeah. And they, they really cannot comprehend growing microgreens. Not all of them. My one buddy really, two of my buddies really can. Yeah. But a lot of them, they'll be like, oh, uh, that one had too much nitrogen. And I was like, this is a this is a four day crop. This is a six day crop, man. I yeah, mean, you're not. I'm not feeding. I'm not too, like. Yeah, you know, it's so much maintenance. They got so much maintenance, and it's so they picky. Can't, they can't wrap their head around that. You don't. And I'm like, I broke it down with Brad Davies once because uh, we wanted to know how it compares uh, by the square foot of growing space, and microgreens were not far behind growing pot. No, it not at all. It was like maybe ten percent. And I'm like, and I don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops or be illegal or whatever, you know? So, like, I'll stick to greens. I'm happy with that. <laughs> so, you're using these CN Sunway. Yeah. Uh, T8, two-foot T8 LED lights. What do you do, run them the other direction? Or no. they, do you get a four-footer? No, I get the four-footer. Is there a four-footer? Yeah. Oh, I don't see one here. Hang on. Yeah, it's the wrong. Hang on. How much do you pay, do you know? I paid like well, the daylight was actually cheaper. I, apparently, we had cool white, which was that, and I was just like, "Well, I'll get daylight because it's cheaper." Well, you need daylight, yeah. Yeah, but the cool white will work as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think it's a different spectrum. I don't. Huh. Know I don't know why you can't spectrum. find it. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't want people to buy all my lights. They're on. That's all right. These are what I'm I use. They're never out of time. Look at that. Purchased five times. How much were those? Hundred and eight bucks for. Uh, uh six but i paid, I paid 55 dollars for six. but okay i get these down to 80 89 when i buy them you i don't do, ever pay 108 do amazon business or how do you do that they just go on sale oh okay all the okay. time um this actually like they're never this much this is the first time i've ever looked and seen them not on sale but i buy these it's probably um, from microgreens courses being sold what's that Probably from microgreens courses being sold. Yeah, right. Prices. Right. Guys, buy my class. Learn how to make 
twenty six thousand dollars of an hour in your grandmother's oh. condo basement. So oh, here we go. Oh, that's my lights. I was just looking at these are nice. So they come with all kinds of extra stuff that you'll have to put in a box and store in your house because you won't be able to throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, have the, I have the complex. I, I have that complex where I can't throw shit like that out. Well, no, because um, you're going to need it at some point. Yeah. All right. So marketing. So it's it's now February 21st. Yeah. And my theory on marketing is you cannot do any real marketing from about November 15th till about March 1st because yeah. through the holidays, no chef wants to see your ass, okay? And they're not making those decisions. The decisions a chef is making during the holidays is why won't anybody work? Uh, how do I spend any time with my family? Oh, my God, these customers are the worst. That's what he's thinking about during the holidays. He's And then you walk 100%. in with some greens and he's like, dude, get the fuck out of my kitchen, you know? So yeah, that's what's happening. A hundred percent. Yeah, I actually had reached out to a lot of people and didn't hear anything. And then, yeah. like, one of my chefs, I hadn't seen her restaurant close during the pandemic. So happy when she like hit me up. I love her. She's she's awesome. Yeah. Um, makes the best fried chicken sandwich in potatoes. It's like. The shit she does, it's like basic ass shit, but it's still fucking yeah. this. Oh, I've had those. She could yeah. do, do like I know what you mean too, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. anybody that takes like a basic ass dish and they and do the best be like, version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. So I picked her up this week. She hit me up. I cool. gave her some samples, and then uh, another location that I was gonna get into, but it was just opening, and then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. apparently they were getting pea shoots from chef's garden um what's which, that a big grower or something yeah it's it it's out of Ohio. i mean dude they 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 probably charge like 40 bucks for a clamshell you know what i mean and it's and it's never all of our stuff looks better but they always have all the weird shit yeah and um so i uh i went in there and i reached out to the guy um because i actually still had his number but my other chef at uh one of my other restaurants was like hey do you grow these i was talking to another guy he was asking where i get them i'm like yeah you know what send me his number. i think i still have his number but send it to me just in case he sent it to me i still had it uh texted him did my first delivery today they're getting like it's it's it should be a good customer they're getting just pee and cilantro which is great pee grows easy and he and then he was like hey could you make them bigger and i was like you Absolutely. mean could I, could I grow my tray out more and <laughs> get more yield out? Of course I could. Fuck right, yes I can. Like yeah, that's a, I get. I try to cut it like kind of shorter. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's what they most that. of them. Yeah. But he wanted like the 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 on the pea shoot. He wants that like finished, that yeah. like little thing. I get like most of my chefs up here uh, asked for bigger stuff in New Hampshire, so I started growing everything big. And then when I got into Boston, I had uh, like this big account that I got. <laughs> In October, one phases. What's phases that? for me. Phases like everyone wants everything oh. really small, then they want everything really big. Oh, see, I don't have they. I just grow the shit though, and they can fucking deal with it. But anyway, so <laughs> like, no, I mean, I do my cilantro mostly small now because the one guy that buys the most of it wants it that way. But that's great. I mean, I got well. So the end of that though, the end of that when you can't market is then holidays are over and it's cold and slow. So they then they still don't want to see you. Like you can't walk in and go, hey, pay, give me five dollars an ounce for cilantro when they're not doing any business, you know? Yeah. So for me, I wait till next week. So next week is when it has to happen, in my opinion. Like that, that's when you can start back up. So it's basically like the first week of March through November 15th. And there's some other times in there you probably should avoid marketing, like the week of fourth of July and stuff, because that's ridiculous, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't yeah, go on Mother's Day and market, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. I, I, so my plan is be prepped for existing customers that I have. They're ordering more. Yeah. Um, and that's right there. If you can sell an existing customer more stuff, it's like you added a fucking restaurant. There is, well, and there is a few turnovers on chefs too. So they're going to be ordering different stuff, which is kind of yep. nice. Um, and then the, the, the distributor, they're, they just picked up ordering more. I went back to Toledo to just try to pick back up my grocery stores I had there. Yeah. Um, and that way, too, I can write off every single trip when I go home and visit family. Okay. Um, 
which is nice. I was yeah. doing it anyway, but now I can legally do it. Uh, I was just, I was just kidding, IRS. I was I would never <laughs> do such a thing. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, it's it's so that's been good. They've they and actually, what's weird is the location. So the it's really cool is because that grocery store I told you it's like a hundred years old. So Walt Churchill, he's still alive, but he just made it uh, employee owned. So I got the new logo um, and they've been, I mean, they just, they ordered a bunch and I didn't hear from them. They, they ordered half, I didn't hear from them and they doubled their order. Um, and that's nice. So that's, uh, I just did a delivery Sunday. I drove up there, drove back. It was like six pounds worth of stuff. So I don't charge as much as you, but I'm not in the, I'm not on the West Coast. I remember I was with my chef buddy. I was like, yeah. I'm not on the West Coast. No, East Coast. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's offensive. My apologies. Uh, I remember I was on that pizza trailer with my buddy Tom, and you were, I was telling yeah. him how much you charge. He's like, oh, my God. I was like, yeah, it's the East Coast. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The markets are different. They're, yeah. they're so different. Like, I do sometimes have to come down for on things. You know, like, I have $3 an ounce stuff. You know, like, my uh, – if you get eight ounces of salad blend or a pound, if you get a pound of salad blend from me, it's two fifty an ounce. So whatever the hell that is. Sixteen times two fifty. So it's about thirty three bucks a pound. So that's yeah. a little bit more than me. Yeah. So not not much though, probably. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like if you buy pink red the red arrow radish I grow, I do that for three bucks an ounce. It's pretty much across the board. Um but if I have to blend that shit, it's it's more. <laughs> oh, another thing. So I'd lost a customer purely to price. And I think I told you about uh, it. I went in there and it looked like shit. And I had an ego about it. And I was like, you know what? I've been with this restaurant since it opened. I want let's go win their business back. Yeah. So I'm all set. I'd raise the price in cilantro. I was going to drop a price of another crop that they were getting and using a lot of. And I was like, I can I can make it work with the margins. So then the day before I'm about to go into my first delivery back, the chef's like, oh, uh, hey, I got to cancel the order. Something's going on. And I go, okay. Uh, so then they they post that they're they're closing because of the cerveza uh, and not sure when they'd reopen, but they're just closing their doors. And they said it was for cerveza. Then apparently, I don't know if this is true, this is just what I heard because, you know, people like to talk in the restaurant industry. Yeah. Apparently, they made, like, plans, one-on-one -on -one people to pay them checks. And then uh, we're going to have one-on-ones. We're going to give you a last check. And then they canceled all the meetings and then paying other people. Oh, my God. And then another customer of mine, the owner died. Like, he had a yeah. heart attack. Yeah. And he didn't have a living will. And he had oh. updated his will. And so the ex-wife was still on like his will. Oh business. man. So I don't know what's going on with that one. And I just started picking them up again because cilantro, they really just wanted cilantro. And now yeah. that I'm at the helm growing cilantro, hey, you guys can check out my Instagram. My trays look fucking great. John will tell you. Yep. But yeah, John, your trays look like that now too. So yeah, what? my stuff looks good. I, I eliminated my mold issue, I guess, or something by not running the heat here. <laughs> yeah so, so here's my we did valentine's day sales man i know this isn't on the agenda here but uh check it out like if, if i can make this uh oh, what did i do hang on let me see if i can go to this how do i go to this you click on oh, share screen i thought i did though yeah sorry folks we're still learning Streamyard. It is it is on there. I don't understand. Do I just go to over here? Yeah, oh, yeah there you go. There I you just go. go to that. Okay, because I set it up right. So I, it's hard to read. Probably is it hard to read? Yeah. Look, look at this though. I hit the uh, the magic number for Valentine's Day. Nice. That's the magic number. Um, that now that's with the, so this was in all greens though. Eighteen sixty nine in greens alone. That is Friday. Through the so what happened? This actually this was interesting. This is this this is a listen to your customers moment, right? Yeah. So we did Friday Valentine's Day deliver. So I call it Friday Valentine's Day because you know people go out on the weekend, obviously, and Valentine's Day was on a Monday, so we assumed that people would go out the week before, right? Um, I messed so, up on that. 
I had to buy, thankfully, Swain bailed me out. I had to buy a bunch of microgreens from him. Yeah, you told me about that. Yeah. So I figured people would go out the weekend before, right? Great. Um, I guess a lot of people went out on Monday. So I had a chef reach out to me that I had delivered to on Friday on Sunday night. And he said, hey, or it was Sunday midday, maybe on Super Bowl Sunday. And he goes, um, hey, can you deliver to me tomorrow? I'm out of stuff. And tomorrow's Valentine's Day. And I, Jenny looked at me. It was her idea. And she goes, do you want me to message everybody? And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And it resulted in like another $800 in sales. Yeah. Instead of waiting till Tuesday that we would have normally done, right? If I, if that guy hadn't emailed or texted us to ask for an order, we never would have changed anything. We would have delivered on our regular Tuesday and we would have lost probably 600 bucks, right? Maybe, maybe 500. But the point is like, you have to always be thinking about this type of thing, right? So like a couple of weeks ago, we adjusted our Friday delivery. And we may do this again this week because we were, we used to just get our ass kicked by a snowstorm, right? So we'll get eight inches of snow or 12 inches of snow on Friday, right? And that day will be dead and we'll lose all those weekend sales basically. Okay. Which is, that's our biggest day, obviously for deliveries. We do Tuesday, Friday. Um, and like, so if we do 500 bucks on a Tuesday, that's great. And then we try to do at least 1500 on a Friday. All right. Um, so if it snows on a Friday, we're going to do like nothing or maybe 400 and it just destroys our income. Okay. So that one week we said, Hey, let's, let's adjust. Let's just deliver on. And the only reason we're thinking this way is because we have the baby, right? I'm like, yeah. let's think, let's deliver on Tuesday, on Thursday, instead of taking the baby out in the snow and trucking him around and back and forth to the grow room and you know, whatever. And it worked great. Like we saved our weekend. So this week again, it's going to snow on Friday. It looks like, and we're going to, you know, do it. We're going to adjust to Thursday, I think. So, Hey, here's my buddy. He's my old roommate. Nice. This is cool. <laughs> hey guys. I've been listening, listening for years show. now. <laughs> He's a good dude. Years He's a funny now. guy. Really got my buddy, one life. of my best friends right there. Thanks for listening, Duncan. Good to see you, man. He's out in Montana working for, um, well, now he works at a uh, a grocery store. Uh, I think he's a meat cutter at a grocery store now. That's awesome. And, uh, before that, he was at a huge uh, ranch in Bozeman. It's like the high end, like touristy, like George Clooney gets married there or some shit. You know what I mean? And he was doing work there, and that was it. Was an interesting job, the stories and whatever. But uh, yeah, it was cool. There's a lot of weird weird work out there for that kind of thing. If you want to travel, work in restaurants. Um, Anyway, though, so I'm getting back into marketing next week. We're going to hit Boston and our commitment to ourselves is one to three restaurants every single week in Boston until, but I, I say that, but sometimes, you know, you can only grow so much and you're not growing way too much extra and you get a big new account and then you got to wait until you can catch up. Right. And then, so yeah. That's kind of yeah. that's kind of where I'm at too, or even like a new chef takes over and they want to use different stuff. So now you're like, okay, let me readjust. Yeah, let me adjust my business real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me adjust my business. It takes up to 30 days to adjust. <laughs> so but my I have um I did get a restaurant last week that um we had interacted with because there's this chef that jumps around like crazy. He's been at probably eight different restaurants and he's reached out to me eight different times and he orders once and then he's gone. <laughs> like, so this place uh, near a home delivery I do in Massachusetts uh, in between Boston and Wellesley, uh, you know, they kind of opened right in the middle of the pandemic kind of thing. So I didn't really expect much out of there. And that guy ordered and then some, then they ordered one other time and then I didn't hear from him again. And then out of the blue last week, they were like, Hey, can we get eight ounces of cilantro and eight ounces of basil? And, and when are duck eggs ready? And I'm like, this is cool. Like, so I delivered to them and I'm like, Hey, you think this will be regular? And he's like, Oh yeah, pretty much this every week. So, you know, that's, we added what $300 a month or whatever, you know, something like that right there. And, it's uh, good. it's easy. You know, that when you get that, get that 10 times, right. You know, it's incremental sales, get that little, get that account that buys $40 a week. Get, but get it 10 times, you know? <laughs> so and then you got yourself a business, you know? Yeah. So. I've been uh, just, I got to get my plantings more consistent. I think um, that has been an issue for me. It's not that I, I, 
I don't plant consistently. It's mainly that like there I am using the the L word. Um, it's I'm I, I I haven't had a good routine. I think with with the new uh, with the new setup, and yeah. so being putting myself on a schedule in that regard, but also to you know the cold weather when it's really cold outside. Stuff doesn't germinate as quick. Then you get them under yep. the lights, and then it's just like that. And the next thing you know, your crop's two days behind. Yep, you got to adjust. Yeah, and it's out of your control. Yep. So, um, I, it's fine though, man. I, I, I am planning. I, I'm pretty sure that the, the food distributor that is going to be that's going to take off more. They're ordering pretty frequently. Um. And consistently and i'm sure they're going to get more they're they're talking about doing something with live trays in the university so i gotta we'll see so i'm glad you can get trays again because that might be yeah something that i'm just actually shipping off live trays but yeah no i i definitely i've had my goals and i hit my 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 sales goal in a week or pretty much it's weird my sales goals like i'm always hitting sales but actually getting those checks that's been like uh that's been a thing where it's like where is this money at so i recently switched over to mailbox money with like my biggest upfront customer that would pay me up front yep and it took like six weeks to sort that out so i got that check last week and then i already yep. got the next check from last week so that's yeah once they good. start rolling you don't even know yeah yeah so it's just building that up I, and I, I i can still do home deliveries um I need to, I really want to shift and start focusing more and more on selling straight to consumer just in case, just yeah. in case. I don't want to be in the same position that we were in, in 2020. Yeah. Here's what I use, man, to keep myself on track. I, I, uh, this about, this should be two weeks worth of planting for me. So like I'll throw the data in up here, you know, it'll be like two, yeah. twenty-two, you know, whatever. But I'll write it. I just handwrite it. I just have this spreadsheet, and that way, at the end of the week, it's like if I filled in all these boxes, then I did everything I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, Excuse me. And for I just, that was I just make myself do it. Um, I generally, I would, I like to be able to just go. I want to knock out eighty percent of this stuff in in the first day that I plant. So on on Tuesday, I want. 80% of this stuff to be down. Right. And then the stuff that's not done is usually less important stuff or stuff that is a, a timing thing. Like we talked about earlier, that takes, you know, takes 20 something days and you're not going to time it out to the day anyway, because the stuff that seems like it, the stuff that takes 20 something days can sit on the shelf for 10 days or longer, you know? Yeah. So like once it's ready to sell, like my basil can sit on the shelf for a week, two weeks until I sell it, you know? So like, it doesn't really matter when I plant basil. So like basil and red sorrel, you know, and that kind of stuff can all wait, you know, till later in the week, if I don't feel like doing it that day. But so on Tuesday though, I try to get through, you know, a X amount of all this stuff. And then I have to just like basically back clean up on one other day. Right. <laughs> and a lot of times I do that on Saturday, I'll come in on, I'll, I'll plant eight cilantro on Tuesday and 16 on Saturday. Cause that's a timed crop for us. And that's how I need to time them. So I'll plant as much as I possibly can on Tuesday. And that's the best timing day for us. And then I'll just clean up everything else on Saturday. And that way, at least I get everything down, you know, every week. And as long as I do that and I stick to these pars that I set for myself and I adjust these every other week or so, as long as I stick to those pars on how many, how many trays I need to plant of each thing. Yeah. Um, I don't run out of stuff and I make those pars a little high. So I have extra, you know, and uh, a lot of times the extra can carry over, you know, so like there'll be some extra radish blend, but we harvested that on Thursday for Friday and it's still good to sell on Tuesday, you know, and, you know, that kind of stuff. And we also have outlet restaurants, I call them basically, where like I have a guy that takes all the sunflower that I have that's extra at a wicked reduced price, but he wouldn't buy anything otherwise because he just doesn't have those kind of sales. But um, yeah. Yeah, so and that's a good that's a good customer to have the person you can just unload all your excess shit on, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah, I don't necessarily have. I mean, I 
sales aren't like the biggest issue for me i think like getting the production part in like it, it what i was behind on sales but a lot of that had to do with production yeah well um, yeah that'll that'll do it i mean it's like it's like running a hotel yeah. you don't have cilantro today when that restaurant wants it it's not like you can sell it to them in three days those fucking sales are gone forever yeah you know? and that actually reminds me that i i burned a I think I burned a pretty hefty bridge and it's like, I think they'd just be buying cilantro right now, but it's like, and I, so I avoided it because cilantro was never really a consistent thing for me, but now that it's consistent, yeah, that's extra money that, you know, yeah. they're getting, it's free money. Basically yeah. you're yeah. growing it anyway. Yeah. I'm growing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we should probably wrap it up, man. We're at an hour 15. Yes, we went sir. a half hour longer than we talked about. That's not bad. I think we covered our, our supply chain issues and maybe some solutions for people. Like I said, I try to just order a year now and like I'm putting on a credit card. Like I don't have credit yet. I need to get okay. credit fixed. Yeah, I'm I'm but I'm also running my budget properly on the other side of that issue. So I have a credit card that's not gonna nail me with any interest for a while. And then I'm also budgeting so that I can pay that stupid card off in time. And I can also not have to use it next time around. So I'm kind of working on that. I'm not doing great at it, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> it's tough. I mean, it's, you know, it's real easy to budget when the money's there, you know, but the, there's weeks where the money's not there. And it's like, what now? Now I got to remember how much I didn't put into that budget last week and I got to catch up. And what if that happens for three weeks in a row in the middle of January when you're not, you know what I mean? I always forget how tough it is in the winter time. Yeah. Winter sucks. Winter sucks, but then like especially post Cerveza, yeah, it really sucks. What is that? What do you mean? Let's well, elaborate. Beer. Huh? Cerveza beer? Oh, just in general, like drinking some Spanish beer. word for beer? No, no, I knew that, but like I didn't really know what you're referring to. Well, think about it. What kind of beer is from Mexico? Oh. <laughs> I didn't get it. All right, it's I get it. Right. I got that from George. That's Gannon. good. That's pretty that's, good. I like that's, that. That's from George Gammon. George Gammon's great. That's good. Um, so I'm just going to say this real quick. I, I didn't discuss this with you before we started, but I think we're never going to run commercials, right? No. Or, or no anything like that. Value. So I will say this. We will always be value for value. We don't yeah. have a model for this yet. And, no. we don't and we don't deserve to have a model for that yet. Um, no, yeah. We need to just be consistent. Like we, yeah. we got pretty much, we were going to record again. And then you got, you got. Yep. The coup. I, got the, I got the yep. I picked and up some beers. What's that? You picked up some beers. You picked up some beers. You got you got in you got inundated with beer sickness. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and, then, I was, and then I was hung over for a while. <laughs> then you were hung over for a while, and then I got I got busy. I was like, oh, I'm moving. I'm doing this, and then I was still hung over though, man. While you were dealing with all that, I was messed up. I was, I was pretty worried bad. about you because I didn't hear, but I didn't hear from you for like two yeah. weeks. And he I was will just call and talk or yeah, he messaged me back pretty quick. And I was like, dude, are you all right? And then I was happy to see, all right, I'm alive. Yeah. It was, it was tough there. Took me a while, but I, um, like I spent new year's like on new year's day. It was like a big effort for me to sit on the couch that day instead of being in bed. It was like, it was a, it was a stretch. It was all dehydration for me though, because like I said, I couldn't keep anything down. I was throwing up everything, but anyway, I don't want to get into that detail. Um, what do you got going on, man? Plugs or anything? What do you have? Uh, nothing. Um, nothing. I mean, you can Zero. check me out, check out sample If you want to order some microgreens, you're in the Columbus area, or you just even want to talk shop. I, I actually had somebody ask me about cilantro he's a guy that i know from back in the day yep. uh he follows my instagram he goes how do you do that i'm stacking seven trays tall and i was just like dude yeah that's that's not what's going on i'm like you need to do this this and this he's like oh that's a lot of work i don't want to do and i was like okay. <laughs> i was like don't tell anyone though this is a trade secret yeah yeah that's a thing <laughs> I'm like, we're not trying to sell <laughs> courses on this shit. We're trying to make a living. And I'll tell you how to grow cilantro, but it's going to be $26,000. Yeah, I'll tell you how to grow cilantro once I'm convinced you're actually like, yeah, it's tool man Tim's. Nice. I did this. I did this yesterday. Everybody go watch my episode on uh, of tool man Tim. Oh, and check uh, out tool uh, man he, Tim, man. He's got him. Yeah, here I am yapping with look at that dual screen me. So uh, we talked about a, we did do a lot of microgreens talk. 
So that's good. And uh, we talked business. We talked just side hustles and whatnot. This guy does a lot of content on side hustles. He's just starting out 3.35, 3,350. I love how YouTube works. Can you just write 3,350? Dude, tool man, Tim, I'd love to be a guest. Instead I of three point, I brought you up. So oh, nice. Good. Nice. So he's got that. What do I have? I don't even know what I have. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I have. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, you have a decent amount. I don't want to be a douchebag, so I'm not going to bring it up. So uh, I was on his show yesterday. I had a great time. He's a good dude. He's our age or he's my age. Um, lives in Canada. Good guy. Oh, he's Scandinavian. Nice. Yeah, he's Scandinavian. He's from uh, Nova Scotia originally. So oh, him wow. and I are likely related. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i had a good time doing that i'll be on unloose the goose tomorrow night at five nice i'm always know, man all these fucking time zones yeah i'm on patreon shows that um for, oh, okay like, school sucks which oh that's cool i like yeah, that show so yeah so it's well it's done but he still has his patreon oh so like like he has his whole library still but then he has like his private, he's got his Discord network. So shout out to Brett Vinat and then uh, Andrew Mercer, who Brett's on another show called uh, Portman Show. And it used to be called Puke in the Gang. And uh, sounds like a morning show. Well, those are dudes. I mean, it kind of is, but it's funny. And they yeah. like, they actually were free staters at oh, back nice. in the day. And uh, so it's Puke and Andrew. And so we do a show called The Discomfort Zone. Um, and that's on Patreon. And so there's, I've released, I've released the first episode of the season. I might go back and release more on the sample hour. Um, uh, but I just try to give it time since it's like, it's on their paywall. Yeah. And honestly, I don't want to just, I don't have any of my own original content. I mean, I do have our old episodes. I need to post. I just need to get to work on the podcast. It's just been a back burner thing with, are you still doing your show? Yeah. I mean, it's just, I had a, start like start from ground zero at the farm again so it was just like well it's on the back burner okay. again and drew uh, is the host of the sample hour yeah that's why i said samplehour.com oh yeah follow me on instagram at cap city greens and then i've been shit posting a ton on my personal instagram so that's at your sample <laughs> i have about zero social media presence um which is probably bad for my business but i just don't i can't deal with it anymore so is it i've I have is not it bad for your business though? I don't know. I don't think it is. I don't think it matters. Um, no. I've gotten, I've definitely gotten accounts off of uh, being on, you know, like they saw our shit on Instagram or whatever, you know. My yeah. wife manages the Instagram account, I guess. I think she's doing it. I'm not sure. I don't really know if I care. The Facebook is dead to me. Um, I barely will deal with this YouTube situation for now because yeah. I kind of need to. We're going to put this out after some time here as a podcast and then we will be away from the beast and uh that's the podcast. i forgot to record the audio on this but I oh no the stream yard will do it we're good okay yeah okay yeah that's so cool. uh we just pull it down and then when we get to episode 15 that's our plan i think we're gonna try to really re release we'll do it a podcast. 2 podcasting and yeah we're maybe gonna... maybe have a better name than the drew and john show yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be good so anyway if anybody has any maybe name, we, can steal, we can steal chris's uh chris's well farmer to farmer it's we can't steal a dead guy's show name. Oh, that'd be fucked up. Yeah, I don't um I have I still have no ideas. So I was thinking about that driving over here and I was like, what do I wanna do here? Like what do I what, what can we call the show? Could we just I don't know. <laughs> we just have we no idea. So many names. So if anybody has any good names for yeah. us. We we both think of names and we go, oh, I kinda like that. And then we go and look it up and someone else already has it. So yeah. It's gotta have good keywords, it's gotta be short. And that's the that's the problem, you know. But whatever. All right, man. I see. What about up. Micro Farms podcast? That's not a bad idea. Or micro the micro farmers. Oh yeah, maybe. Hang on, I'll Google that shit right now. We we already, it was this one that we already came up with though? That's maybe. Exciting. We probably did. If I Google the mic. Yeah, <laughs> taken right. The micro farmers. It's a business. It's a business. I mean, they're not going to be in business much longer. Let's be real. Grow superfood at home. What? What? Want to eat better every day? Microgreens grow kits. 
Wheatgrass grow Coles, kits. There's a Coles fucking has scam. Grow kits now. Huh? Coles has microgreen grow kits now. I like that right below wheatgrass grow kits is pet grass grow kits. Because, folks, I want to let you in on a little secret. It's the same bullshit. And I it like, all sucks. I like pet grass, though. <laughs> uh, it, all this is like barley and, yeah. and cat grass. My it's cats correct. love the cat grass. How much do these people want for this? Hmm. Let's see. Let's uh, smell it over. I Let's this see. smells of true leaf. I'm sure it's one of their subsidiaries. Oh no, it's dot ca. Yeah, no, it's a thing powered by Shopify. This is a this is someone jumping on the uh I want to make I'll make money on microgreens by just throwing some stupid shit in a bag and sending it out. What is this? 3.75 inches by six inch ceramic looking tray. Is that ceramic with no drain holes? Yeah. Oh, because it's hydro. And then this oh. garbage. God, what a mess. People with 17 bucks for this piece of shit. Every, so you, every you can grow a half an ounce of pea tendrils. Wow. Easy grow, oh, easy grow four trays of peas. P peas, please, microgreen mix. Includes four portions of peas, please seed mix with organic non GMO seed. Well, so $17, Canada, so $17 for like four fucking ounces of pea tendrils is what that is. That you have to do yourself. Sounds do yourself like a favor, price. folks. Just go to fucking Whole Foods. Do yourselves a favor and just order from your local farm. Oh, the customers oh! one star. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should take this name, the Micro Farmer Podcast. I think you're right. Microfarmerpodcast.com. I think we should. Available. I'll buy it right fucking now. I think we should take this name because these people are scams and we don't like them. Um, uh oh. Our micro farms. Shut the fuck up. Our micro farms. <laughs> oh, I got to not curse. Sorry. We got kids. No, there. whatever. I just. What is this garbage? Oh my God. I hate these people. <laughs> If you people want to come on our show and defend your bullshit, you're welcome. Please I'm on do. StreamYard now so I can add a third person. Please do. Please come on and we defend. We have plenty this. of questions we'd love to ask you. Yeah, please come on and defend this fucking scam that you're running. <laughs> Good for them, though. It is grifting season. <laughs> Get your grift on. Get your Grifting grift season. That's that's all Hotep, Jesus, and Uncle Hotep. That's, 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 that's fantastic. Uncle Hotep. So, uh, he sells the shirts, grifting season. That's great. I've never heard that. I got to watch more things anyway. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this up now at a minute and a half or an hour and 27 minutes. Thanks for watching us uh, again. Sorry. We were gone for so long. Oh, there's another comment. Oh, Duncan. Duncan says he likes the show name and he says, oh, micro, nice. and then he asks micro vloggers. Do people still vlog? I don't think vlog is a word anymore. No, right? I think they all took on the term podcast. Yeah, I think so. Hey, real quick. See this. Duncan will appreciate this. See this little spot I have on my face? Yeah. Barely. That's yeah. because I threw someone out of the bar the other night. Oh, because you're picking up bar shifts again. No, I was just there drinking. And if you worked there and you're there drinking, you're now the bouncer. <laughs> right? Is that how and, that uh, is there? Me and the guy that is the plumber guy were there. We're uh, just having a beer. And there was a good band on. And something went down. And... He, I sent him over because I was carrying and I didn't want to get in the middle of anything. No. Um, and it seemed like it was fine. And then it went downhill fast. And he, I went over because it went downhill. And he had the one guy under control. But the other kid was coming back over while the other guy was like basically pinned on the ground. So I grabbed this kid and just picked him the fuck up and removed him from the bar. <laughs> and then his girlfriend came at me and slapped me in the face twice. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she hit me twice and I looked at her like this. I went <laughs> and she looked terrified because I just looked at her like fucking confused because it didn't even I like barely felt it, you know, but I got this little this little thing right here on my face from her. So that was fun. <laughs> That's crazy. I have not been in a fight. I was thinking like, did I get in a fight too? No. I didn't get a fight. I removed a guy from the bar. There was no fighting involved because there was no way this guy could fight me. <laughs> okay, so I just I just bought microfarmerpodcast.com. 
All right. Hey, folks, thanks for watching the Micro Farmer podcast. Thanks for watching the Micro Farmer podcast. We got a name. We just now we just have to figure out how to get a <laughs> podcasting 2.0. All right. So up. let's talk then real quick. We'll always be value for value. If anybody wants to design us a logo, we're definitely open to this. <laughs> we are. Yeah. <laughs> so if you if one of you three people that watch this enjoys what you saw and you happen to be a graphic designer, we are definitely looking for that. All right, man. Why don't we wrap it up? Hey, thanks for watching. And uh, we're going to do our best to do this every Monday at seven o'clock. Every Monday. Roughly. We'll say seven or eight. And I what yeah. I'll do is yeah, we'll I talk the, uh, and I will schedule zones it. On, uh, I do the discomfort zones on every other Monday. Okay. So, but that's usually at like five or five thirty. So it should be done by then. Is that enough time? Seven yeah. or eight? I mean, All right, yeah, I'm going to end this. Hold on. I'm going to end this. All right. See you later, folks. Thanks.